King Rune KP3 Pro printer right here. Had a lot of inquiries. How'd you do that? I will show you here coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the loft above the shop because it's clean and warm up here and dusty and cold down in the shop. So I'm working up here today. Had a lot of inquiries about the, the KP3 Pro, KP3S Pro, but whatever the hell the number is. How did I get this filament mounted up here? Uh, normally you have your little filament holder out here and the spool feeds in and I have sort of defeated the uh, filament runout sensor right here. Uh, I don't really need it. Uh, I've worked for a long time without ever having them. Yes, it's nice if you have filament run out, it stops the print. But I'm usually close by and I also keep a very close eye on how much filament I have so that I don't run out. And I also make sure I keep my filament dry so it doesn't break. Okay, that doesn't make sense to a lot of you, but with PLA filament, if you allow it to accumulate a lot of moisture and humidity out of the air, it'll become very brittle and break. And that's, I've had a lot of people say, you know, when my filament's breaking, you know what, is it dry? Where do you keep it? Well, I just kind of keep it hanging on the printer. Well, you can't do that. If you're not using it, you need to put it in a dry box or keep it somewhere dry or put it in a dryer before you use it. Or you may have problems not only with the filament breaking, but as that filament passes through that hot end, any moisture in there will flash the steam and you'll end up with bubbles and little imperfections in your print, also called artifacts. Okay, so how did I do this exactly? I will put the STL source file, or where I got it, I got it from Thingiverse, in the description where you can download it and print it yourself, but I'm going to show you the modification I had to make to the actual mount. The mount for this was designed to actually fit inside this uh, 2030 extrusion right here, 2040 or whatever they call that, to actually plug into the top of it. What I did after I printed it was cut those tabs off that would normally go down to the extrusion because you have a z-axis bearing support up here. I then took the two screws out of this support, laid it on top of the uh, filament holder mount, marked out my two holes and countersunk them a little bit because I didn't have screws long enough to go all the way down. Put the screws in, that also holds this plate in place, it holds this good and firm. So what else is involved with this? It's printed in, multi in three parts. You've got the base, and no I didn't print them all on this printer, I used three different printers to do this. You have the roller right here, and then you have the holder. The uh, holder was printed on here. Uh, the, this was printed on an Ender 3, and I believe that the mount here was printed on a longer, but that's immaterial because they all print. Okay, you need some bearings for this. On each end of this roller, there's a bearing, and a bearing, and they fit in like so. So where do you get the bearings? Well, you can buy some, or you could take your existing filament holder, take a little punch and just push hard on these pins and they will come out and you can use those bearings, you don't have to buy anything. So then I just take this, it slips onto the top and you can change the angle if you wish. Oh, I don't want to wrap in this. Your filament spool then rides on that and you can adjust the angle which I like it about there. So that's all there is to that. Okay, originally when I did this, I did have this running this direction and running down into the uh, bottom of the filament sensor, through the filament sensor, and then back up into the extruder. That kind of worked, but every once in a while I would get a little catch on here and then I would under extrude because of that weird path. Uh, as I said, I worked for a long time without uh, filament runout sensors and most of my printers don't have them because I just keep an eye on my filament so that I don't run out. 
So I just stuck a piece of filament inside and kind of looped it so it always sinks filaments there. Have I done anything else to it, like upgrade the bed leveling springs? No, because I do not have a problem with my bed going on a level here. It has stayed in place. This is my, I think my third spool of filament I've run through this printer. Uh, I do check the bed level every couple of days or because I've been doing some prints on here that are, are taking 14, 15 hours. And be, after that, I will check my bed level, but it has stayed very, very, very close. I have not had any problems with that. I haven't had any problems with my prints not sticking. Yes, I know the bed's dirty. I need to clean that before I start my next print. But uh, putting this filament holder up top here because of where I put this, which is actually over here uh, in front of the window behind that uh, Kingrin printer in the corner. It's a nice little compact printer. It's great for small parts. And that's what I use it for. Although some of those small parts are rather complex, so it takes a while to print them. So, so there's how you put this filament holder up on top. And again, I'll put the uh, Thingiverse source file into the description so you can make your own. And I'll also put a link in the description on where you can get one of these printers because these things are nice. Nice little small format. Don't take up a lot of space. Does a good job. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.